Yeah, yeah. Zero Terror has been awesome. It's been a lot of fun. Um, and and like I mentioned at the top of the show, uh, I've been working on a, a small little uh, mini tutorial series, uh, which can sort of brings together all the tips and tricks of Zero Tier and EVNG, just to help everyone sort of... Um, uh, get the most out of their labbing, especially when they lab using uh, Google Cloud um, as their platform, as their infrastructure, as a service. Um, so I, I wanted to talk a little bit more about it because I think last time we just dived into a demo, which was relatively quick and just kind of just showed how quickly you can stand up um, a, a, a VPN between two endpoints. And, and that was wildly successful and we did it in less than five minutes and that's why i love zero tier and um, we didn't really actually talk about sort of how that works so we wanted to kind of sort of step backwards and talk about how that works a little bit so um over here uh, i want to say on zero tiers website which is just zero tier.com um they have a a pretty good knowledge base and a lot of times when i'm going for this information this is where i'll start um they also have another link uh that i will share with you guys um, uh, which is, uh, which goes into pretty good depth on everything, uh, that they do. Um, one of the things I like to always point out is that these are the root addresses. So I, I am going to try and sort of draw if I can on my screen, um, draw the hierarchy that zero tier sort of operates in. And at the very top of that is going to be the root servers. Uh, these are owned and managed by Zero Tier. So unless you're running your own uh, controller or if you're running your own node as a moon, um, you are using one of these. So when you connect a node to the Zero Tier network, it is communicating back to um, all of these addresses. And it's telling them all what your node is. And of course, it's picking up your public IP address from that communication. And so all of your nodes are doing that. And therefore, this knows about uh, these, these controllers here, these root servers know about the public IP address, the cryptographic node ID of each endpoint. And so when you send your ping uh, or your traffic from, from one node to another, it's actually going to relay through a root server. And that's one of the reasons why we only have to worry about um, uh, our outbound uh, UDP traffic because it's going to be coming back in that same UDP channel that we have already connected to that root server. Now, that's why this is just sort of stupid simple and always works and why it makes it so easy to connect two nodes on separate networks. However, there's a more efficient way for nodes to talk to one another, right? And that's to actually go from peer to peer, right? To skip the relay altogether. Um, I don't actually need to send uh, encapsulate packets in zero tier, send them to a relay, one of their root servers, just to go to uh, my Google Cloud instance. I should be able to send that directly. Well, how that happens is, is the, each node actually talks to um, the root server and the root server tells each node the other's address. And then they'll start sending UDP packets directly to each other um, using something called UDP hole punching. Um, this is really cool. Um, this isn't anything that's brand new. This is a very old technique, um, but it's specifically designed for this. And it works great with UDP because UDP doesn't have a sequencing uh, uh, mechanism the way TCP does. So TCP is always going to have um, a sequence um, in a pending order or in ascending order, I should say. UDP doesn't have um, a concept of that. So we are able to actually use the UDP hole punching method, send packets to each other, and they'll actually um, traverse the firewall. That's really cool. Um, so if anyone wants to read up on that, just UDP hole punching. Um, if you ever try to think like if you have a firewall or a gateway on your, at your home network, how does the zero tier packets come into the network, right? If they're coming from another node remotely, um, if you guys are doing direct peer to peer uh, without opening a firewall port. That's the, whole, that's the whole point here is without opening that firewall port, how do you do it? And uh, UDP hole punching is, uh, is a pretty cool technique. And this sort of breaks it down here in the flow. 
so again, uh, I, I did a lot of research on this to try and understand um, what was going on under the hood with zero tier. And there's a number of, of tricks that they employ. And, um, and it's pretty cool. A lot of it is sort of coming from the perspective, written from the perspective of a developer. Sadly, um, I'm not a developer <laughs> and I don't know that, that language very well. Um, so I'm more focused on the network communication and actually what that looks like. So um, the other thing I wanted to show you on Zero Tier's website, if you go to uh, their website, uh, zerotier.com, you go to support and manual. This is actually sort of a, a, a many, many, many pages document that sort of breaks down what the architecture of Zero Tier is, uh, what the flow looks like as it goes from node to root server to node, and and sort of how it handles the, the virtual interfaces on each operating system. So I think that's super cool. I can't get into too much of it, but I really wanted to understand um, how that network flow was working. Uh, so it sort of operates on, on two levels, the VL1 and VL2. VL1 is actually sort of the, the transport, the encrypted transport. And VL2 is more of the, the interface on the operating system uh, that, your, that your operating system um, uh, pushes packets through. So uh, I think that's very cool. Uh, the root servers, uh, zero tier sort of has a little bit of its own nomenclature. Um, obviously, root servers you know, you can visualize what those are, similar to DNS root servers. Um, but there's a, a concept of worlds. Uh, there's a world definition. And there are planets and there are moons. And right now, I, have a, I am a node. My workstation, rather, is a node. And right now, it's connected to one planet, which is our planet. So all of the, the root servers are connected to our planet, which is Earth. It's... We're not going to have another planet, um, but it, it, it affords us the ability to scale out. Um, if we needed to start using another planet uh, here on Earth, we could do that. Um, but right now, everything, um, while it's uh, relatively small, it still operates on the um, uh, Earth planet. And um, moons are just like the root servers, but they are root servers that you would run locally that you would run um, um, within your data center, within your enterprise. Um, and, and one of the examples it gives is uh, maybe you don't want to be able to, maybe you don't want to register to the root servers. You don't want your nodes to register to the root servers. You can configure them to register to the moons, to the controller that you operate. Um, moreover, if you lose internet connectivity, if you lose connectivity between your node and the root server, you can't register and therefore you can't talk node to node. You can't send traffic. Um, but what if you still have reachability within your enterprise between two nodes that would typically be using zero tier? If you stand up a controller within your environment, that's called a, a moon, those devices are able to talk to the moon and use that as their relay and use that as their, their source of information to let each other know uh, what their addresses are and how to reach each other. So I think that's super cool. Um, I had to dive into it a little bit uh, to figure out what was going on. So uh, one of the other things I did was I started uh, capturing some packets. That's what I like to do. I like to study the traffic uh, and understand how things work. And this is, this is how I do it. So um, I have a, a VPS, uh, a Linux VPS um, on a cloud provider. And uh, I joined it to zero tier and I have my local uh, Nick here in my home um, uh, for, uh, from my uh, DHCP server. And uh, I, connect, I, I distilled down, I, I used a filter, sorry. I used a filter to just drill down to our two hosts and everything is just UDP. And in fact, Wireshark doesn't classify this traffic as anything. It, maybe they don't have a, um, a dissector for, um, for zero tier. And so I was started looking at these payloads. And as I go down the line here, I'm starting looking at these payloads. As I go down packet by packet, there's nothing clear text. There's nothing I can look at. There's no identifiers that I can see that is going to tell me what's going to what. Um, so I used a strategy that I do when I'm trying to figure out sort of protocol fuzzing and figure out what's going on. Um, I used a, a T-Shark to actually extract only these payloads. And then I can stack them and compare them visually and, and see sort of what lines up, what fields line up. But as long as you have not variable length fields, but, but fixed length fields, 
um, they'll always be in the same place. And what was very interesting was I found some of those and I found what they were. So here is a, a notepad document. This is the hex dump of the payload. Uh, this is with all of the layer four header removed, uh, uh, layer four and up, or I guess layer four and down, I should say. So this is actually starting to payload. And these are packets of varying length, but you'll actually notice that the, this group right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight packets are all equal length. Look, they all finish, the, the payloads all finish at exactly the same mark. That's very interesting. Um, these two packets finish at exactly the same mark. So these are some, some interesting components to this protocol, and I can't actually find any information on, on how this is broken down on Zero Tier's website. What I was able to find is there's a hex 88 right in the middle. Well, it's not quite right in the middle, but um, about 20 bytes, maybe 25 bytes in to each payload. So what I did is I started separating bytes out from there, right? So now I have one fixed spot in the payloads. Uh, and what that looks like when I start breaking them out is I started noticing this. I started separating them and I could see that some were the source and some were the destination. So in one notepad are my, uh, are my sources. Uh, this is unidirectional traffic going from the source to the destination. And this is the return traffic coming from the destination back to the source. And what I found was, is this 88 identifier, this hex 88, um, sort of delineates some fixed field in the packets. What I found ahead of that was, this is the 10 byte node ID. It's a 40 bit value of the source. This is the 10 byte 40 bit ID of the destination. And so when I stack these, you can see they flip flop. Oh, every time I click on one, it goes away. Let's do it like this. Pardonnez-moi. Should have had a little better, a little better window management. Okay. Uh, so what, what I was showing was, is that these flip flop. So what was the source becomes the destination. And uh, what was the, the destination sort of becomes the source. And while this isn't significant, this is like the first step in being able to identify sort of what's going on here in the payload. Now, the zero tier documentation says this is um, uh, fully encrypted. Um, it, they're using uh, PKI for node IDs and uh, a bunch of crypto, crypto something. <laughs> uh, I, I can't write code, so I don't know what the hell they're doing. Um, but there's a bunch of cryptology stuff. Uh, so this is entirely encrypted. But I, again, one of the interesting things is, is that, you know, they're all fixed lengths. They're not variable length. And typically when you're encrypting things, you know, even if I encrypt the same thing, uh, the same message rather, um, I will get different lengths um, out of the end of it. Um, unless you're using sort of a, I guess, a, like a fixed hash or something, a, a fixed uh, hashing method. Um, someone can drop me a message in the chat. Someone can shoot me a message on Twitter and kind of break it down for me. But I thought this was really cool because what this means is, is no matter where you are, if you're able to pull a PCAP, uh, you're able to quickly identify whether or not the UDP traffic that you're seeing is part of zero tier communication. And then you can start to take a look at, wait, I have, I can see these nodes. So right now I would be able to build something in Python that'd be able to strip all of the uh, strip all of the zero tier node IDs out of a PCAP and be able to have that as, as some sort of evidence. Um, so I don't know what the what the leading values are yet. I'm still going to dig into that and see what I can find. But I thought that was very, very interesting. Very, very cool. Um, one of the other things I wanted to show you um, as I've been digging around in a lot of places that I shouldn't are in the uh, uh, Windows driver. Let's see, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Uh, this is the Windows driver um, INF file uh, that Zero Tier installs. <laughs> and they gave us a little hidden message here in the strings, which is 
Zero Tier Networks, LLC. We're Zero Tier, Inc. now, but kernel mode certs are $300 plus. So, fuck that. <laughs> and I thought that was just uh, a little bit of programmer humor tucked into the uh, the thing. That's classy and right there's, there. There's one, yeah, there's one other thing in here, which is it says NDIS 5. Yes, NDIS 5 is correct. Yep, Windows. So, so two little messages in there. Um, I like to find that stuff out. And there's another thing I want to show you guys, which is, I think this driver is signed with a certificate. And maybe Zero Tier can correct me on this, but here's the certificate that's in the same directory as the driver, named the same as the driver. And it expired in 2016. What's up with that zero tier? See right here, it's got the little red circle. So maybe someone can help me out with that. Um, anyhow, so uh, so yeah, so I just wanted to sort of break that down a little bit. I wanted to talk through it a little bit more. Um, I think there's a there's a, a a lot of very cool things we can do with this sort of architecture. Um, this allows people, uh, excuse me, nodes to, co to co uh, communicate with each other uh, via peer to peer. -to -peer because they get the information from a root server, which tells the other end what their IP address is and, uh, and what port uh, they're coming from. So I think that is super, super cool and uh, a very clever way to get through to that. Um, obviously, you can open up the ports on your firewall. That's a, a great way to do it too. Um, but I would say that would probably be only inside of a perimeter boundary, probably not the um, outside of your perimeter boundary. <laughs> Pass Solutions has over two decades of experience building network monitoring systems designed to give you total network visibility. TotalView's automation means it can be fully deployed and configured in minutes, monitoring every device, interface, and server in your entire infrastructure. And it goes deep, collecting performance, configuration, 19 different error counters, PoE, and QoS statistics on every single interface. Now, all of this information is automatically analyzed to produce plain English answers. Problems get solved faster because more information and intelligence is brought to bear. This is what total network visibility is all about. Knowing more about your network than with any other solution. TotalView is easy to acquire as everything is included in the core offering. NetFlow, diagramming, path mapping, server monitoring, network automation, IPAM, cloud service monitoring, and more. Putting your trust in a monitoring system can require a leap of faith. From inception, TotalView has a more secure architecture and build process that helps to protect their customers. Contact Pass Solutions today, where you can learn more about their competitive upgrade program. Total network visibility, rapidly deployed. Find out more at www.pathsolutions.com.